the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. So we're working on a pretty cool truck today. I haven't really seen one of these. I mean, I have, but I haven't. It's just your typical Colorado, basically. Nothing special. Although this one had been lifted. It's got, it's got wheel spacers on it. That ain't what's cool. Because you can tell somebody at one point really, really cared for this truck. But this is what I'm talking about right here. This is a, you know, usually these things have a damn, I think a straight five in them, five cylinder. But uh, this bad boy got the, the LS in it, probably the five three, I'm thinking. So this is pretty cool. It's a 2011 called the Off-Road. We, uh, I already changed all the door speakers. The wire ran back here. They had some wire here, but not enough. Like this, they had a system in it at one time. There was a lot of stuff ran through it. Like it had that in it and everything. I'm putting these little shallow weights in there and a little under the seat box. Nothing special, just a little sealed box. But uh, apparently the dad that got this for his son or whatever, they just brought it in, wanted this done for a Christmas present. So that's what we're doing today. I did change the end dash in it. I had to put the microphone up yonder there. And it's got the little, the little headlight. Bryson loves this damn headliner. What'd you do, Bryson? It don't work no more. I did plug it in. There we go. Bryson been in here playing with his damn headliner. He said he won't want it in. Don't you, Bryce? <laughs> he won't want in his Tahoe. But they had stickers up there. Like I said, somebody really, at some point, loved this truck. But it's got the lift and everything. It'd be a nice truck. I mean, I just like it because it's got the 5.3 in it or whatever the hell is under there. We got that badass little truck done. It ain't very loud at all, but it ain't supposed to be too little. Shallow eights under the seat. What the hell? <laughs> so I got jangling in here. And one big issue I got is my rivet nut that holds the top of my door panel. Yeah, it's gone. And these studs are what hold the door panel on. So you can tell from like here to here, that's a big gap. And we're broke here, here. I can pull this one out because I don't need it. That's my door popper there. Uh, and I need to run Vibraflex all up through here, which I have some Vibraflex up here. Nolan gave me a couple sheets. And uh, this is gonna help me out with this. But I definitely, we got a welder piece still in hither. So yeah, that's what we're getting ready to do. Dustin's busy tenting, but while he's busy tenting, like I, you can see where I Vibraflex inside of the door, you know, but I want to get all of this here. And like I tell you guys all the time, and I know a lot of y'all don't think there's a difference, but this shit, Beetle Deadener, it's just that, it's shit. And I need to get it off of here and get all this Vibraflex to cut down on the extreme amount of flexing that it has. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna start doing now is getting this shit off so I can get good deadener on Went through, cleaned the, the cheap ass butyl deadener off of this stuff and tried to clean it, see if I can get duct to tack that so I can vibraflex it. But this, <laughs> this is what we had to work with here. But I cut a piece of steel. It was over here cooling down. So let's see what we got. Yeah, I'm gonna have to grab, grab that out of the vise. Oh, come on, come on, baby. I haven't cleaned the edges yet, so don't judge, oh, but yeah. I just did a rough right. shape to try to, see what I'm talking about, guys? See, you see what I'm talking yeah, about? The way he can stick that on here, get uh, some tacks all the way around, then weld it up. You're probably looking at $2 so, 
my my thing went like right here, so we should be good. But anyway, got that. I don't know what to do here. You know, I'm that dust and look at that because he's a, a fabricator, a good fabricator. So, I mean, I know y'all try to judge his welding, but because the one time that he was sick. But anyway, that's what I got going. All right, I'll be back. So I got everything ready for repair here, but I started putting Vibroflex down. And this is Vibroflex. And like I said before, a lot of you guys don't know and you think, oh, I can get the cheap deadener off Amazon, you know, the kill mat or whatever. It's not like this shit. You got to put it on with a torch to get it pliable. And then once it cools down, it's like hard as a rock. So it's just, there's no comparison. This, yeah, there, this don't compare at all to that. What? Big tent job. And I put a door pull on that door finally. I, I've been driving it a couple times since I put that door on. I got to roll the window down and open it because it didn't have my pull on there. So I'm happy to have that on there. So I did that, but now I'm just going to do some uh, deadener on here. And except for around these spots, that I'm going to try to get Dustin to, to load up for me when he gets time in between tent jobs. So... He giving her hell anyway uh yeah i'm gonna get back to work so i've went about as far as i can go with the vibroflex until we get this welded and this in but i mean i kind of got it close here but this was kind of an afterthought cutting a piece of steel to put there to brace things but anyway you all get the picture just waiting on dusting in between cars to kind of get this um but it is it is what it is guys you know um yeah i'm happy i got my door handle in i bought my voltmeter from lf audio that i was going to try to put in today but i don't think i'm gonna have time and i'm not even sure what time it is look in there this thing's still beating though i did some demos this morning it was cold as hell I have my hood open because I put some transmission fluid in the old girl. If you go to shows, let me see, I make sure it's still working. Yeah, I mean, if you go to shows that I'm at and you see me demoing, there's usually a little puddle of trans fluid under the front of this thing. I don't know why it does it, but it only does it when I rev it up to like two grand and leave it there all day. It, it'll leak like a couple of tablespoons of trans fluid. So I don't know, but I, I added some this morning. It's all good. So, yeah, what the hell we got here? Look at, damn. Damn, guy, you, you just can't hide money. <laughs> hey, motherfucker. Might want to get some water just in case. Sorry, guys, I didn't get a picture of that after he welded it, but I vibroflexed the shit out of it. I almost didn't get no footage, and I'm like, hey, I need to record, but I already got that in there. And if you're going to try to criticize the weld, remember, this had deadener on it, and if you've welded where there's been deadener, then you already know. But, yeah, all that vibroflex in here. I added a stud right there. Uh... So it should be a whole lot more secure than it was. And especially in this region right here where everything was broke. But yeah, I'm getting my door panel back on and putting this shit back together. All right, so it's all back together. I just checked, all the speakers are working. Everything up here look good. We got that bolt in there now and we added one back in here for reinforcement. So uh, everything should be solid. And I've already, adding some vibroflex on the door skin so all that's left to do now is take my ass home because it's like dark outside my work day's over I got one more to do. and dustin still got another one to do out of this so yeah today's been slammed like he had to weld that all up between cars like way after five when we're supposed to leave got old jangalang outside peacocking Got old Jangalang peacocking out here. 
Damn, them rock lights are bright. That's some redeemed LED. Yeah, it's looking good. I was getting ready to take this bitch home. I got around the building, turned the headlights on, and the headlights no working. Neither one of them, not high nor low, so. I checked every fuse in there. Fuse is all good. We just got something wrong. So Deb coming to get me in the blazer and uh, I'll come back tomorrow and drive that bitch home in the daylight. It is what it is. <laughs> so Deb came and rescued me in the blazer. And guys, this thing's still for sale. But hold on, hold on, hold on. That little cheap ass screen I put in here uh, that thing's pretty badass. Like, the base ain't really affecting it a whole lot. I know it's just a cheap, cheap screen. Like, I had a dude message me on Facebook said that uh, he sells some things for like $30 or he hits them for like $30, but kind of impressed with how good the camera quality is on it at night. But yeah, anyway, uh, I'll be back. Yeah, I'm at the shop. By myself, it's Saturday morning, but I left Jenga laying here last night. Deb came and rescued me. And we took the little blazer out for a couple hours last night. But, got the dash tore apart. I gotta get into here, into there, and see what's wrong with that switch. Like, I have no high beam indicator no low beams or high beams. So what's that telling me? It's telling me there's something wrong that maybe the switch ain't getting power or since it's from 1994, that switch could just have burnt up. Either way, I gotta get it out, which means I gotta remove this bottom, which sucks. But it is what it is, guys. I need to, it's got holes anyway. I need to fix it. I need to get a new one really, but Anyway, it sucks pulling the radio out of here because the only thing I hate about Kenwood's is that USB cable for the rear. I have to fish it down through there and there's no room, it sucks. And Deb usually always has to do it for me. And Deb dropped me off this morning because she had shit to do, so kind of here by myself. All right, guys, let me get back to work. Super glue still holding up, guys, but man, I checked the wiring out here. No power, but what's crazy that I can't figure out is right here, I pulled the headlight switch out. You kind of see a wire there that I burnt the casing off of. That is my power out of the headlight switch to power the headlights. Now I uh, tapped in it with this test light and as you can see, there's no power. But if I turn that on and probe it, it comes on. So, see? That's got me puzzled. I got power to the switch. I got power leaving the switch. So theoretically, I can put the switch back. Switch is good. Now I just got to figure out where the hell my problem is that. And this kind of irks me. Because I need to fix this thing and take it home today. I mean, Dustin don't care that it's sitting in the shop. And we're not coming back to Wednesday. But still, it needs headlights. So I'm puzzled at this point. I don't know what the hell to do. I mean, I know I can hot wire the headlights off of that switch off of that wire there i can i can hot wire them all i gotta do is run a wire from the output there to the headlights but if i can't figure out what's wrong it's probably what i'm gonna have to do uh i just probably won't have no no high beam which i don't really need high beam with these headlights but still something's wrong so I guess 
I know the headlight code. I need to pull all this out of the way and get in there to these wires on hull and figure out what the hell is going on, guys. So that's what I'm gonna do. So Dustin stopped by for a few minutes and helped me do a bunch of testing. And the problem is I've got power in there, but none out here. So a wire must have broke somewhere between there and up here. So what I have done, I got me a good piece of red OFC wire that I have already tested, sticking it to my low beam plug here, well, right there. And I have headlights that way, off the factory switch. <clears throat> I never use high beam in here in case the high beam don't work. I have isolated which terminal on the wire here is my low beam and that's the one I'm gonna use because LED headlights, I don't really need high beam at all. Or I haven't yet. So guys, it, it, I, I don't wanna spend two days trying to figure this out. Not when I can just do it myself relatively easy and tap back into the harness up here and be done. So. That's what I'm gonna do. But it's just wild, because high beam, low beam, everything quit working at once. So, like I said, I got power in and out of the switch. And, you know, at another time, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna pull everything underneath this apart when I put my, uh, when I get the new alarm and put it in. And at that point, I'm gonna check my dimmer switch on the column and see what I have there for power coming out for high beam. If I do, then I'm gonna run another wire from that to the, the harness. Well, I'm gonna tie into the harness under here, but that way I will have a uh, high and low beam at that point. But for now, this is kind of my best plan of action, I think. And while I'm in here screwing around, if I have time, I got here kind of early this morning. If I had time, I brought my voltmeter and I want to put it right here where that meter is at. So I'm going to go ahead and get all that set to wire up. That shouldn't take me too long. But guys, this shit, it's. And getting this radio out of here is a monster. God, this plug feeding it down through there. I mean, it was a pain to get these big four channel RCAs up there, but, and for people wondering what brand RCAs I have in here, certified base head and down for sound. It just seemed to me like the best quality bang for the buck. But anyway, I'm gonna get back to work. So I'm getting things back together and I ain't even checked the headlight shit, but, and if you're wondering, these wires go to a toggle switch for the underhood electric fan. It never works right in these Cherokees, and I found out the best thing to do is put it on a switch. Oh, if your temp gauge starts creeping past two temp, you turn it on. But anyway, I got the meter mounted. I put that LF sticker right there, but anyway, I got it mounted. And if you're wondering why I put stickers uh, up on that, that is called like Max Black. It is... Uh, uh, basically 100% opaque. You cannot see nothing through it. But anyway, uh, yeah, a little badass meter. Now, what I had is I had this ran off a relay in the back uh, that came on with the key to this cheap meter. I had it that way for years. So I'm gonna have to go in the back, take it off the relay, hook it straight to the battery. The pink wire I done ran, it's gonna go to the alternator under the hood. And we got your ground and your remote. So it's all good, guy. I got that set up already. Now I need to get that one piece back here that holds my radio and all that shit. And uh, yeah, start putting some of this stuff back together. Well, I mean, for the most part, I got this shit back together. Like, Jangalang has broke all the little clips on the sides that hold like this in so that's why i kind of had these screws here but used to be a screw there is broke there is broke out and what it is is the actual dash skeleton is screwed like 
you know, all this shit here, it is literally like just broke all that shit. And I get it, guys. It's a 94. I mean, what do you expect? But hell, let's, let's see if this old uh, LF Audio High Precision. Oh, look at that boot up, baby. Look at that boot. Look at that boot. Oh, look at that. And I shouldn't need the pin number off of it because uh, if I remember correctly, it's already been Bluetooth to my phone. I had an app, so I should be able to go in and change it to what I want. And if you're not familiar with this, I have a short video on here of this voltmeter somewhere. But I might go through and show y'all. And this shit is aluminum. It ain't cheap 3D plastic, but... Also, it's like a $200 voltmeter. I think it's on a Christmas sale right now. But we have like power, remote, alternator, and ground. It'll show me two voltages at once if I want it to. So that way I can distinguish between battery bank, alternator. It's like the fastest voltmeter on the market by far. I can't remember what he said. 3,000 times a second. It'll, it'll show your whatever, you know, your voltage. But anyway... Um, I got it mounted. It looks good there. It's right where I can see it too, like when I'm demoing, which is awesome. So now y'all need to say a prayer for me because it is time to put my head unit back in. And the only thing I hate about the beloved Kenwood is this. I have to fish this down through there to come out under here. And it is a pain in the ass. I've only been able to do it a couple times in my life. My lovely wife normally does it for me. So, and as you know, she is not here. So I have to do it by myself. Either that or, yeah, I, I have to do it. There's no way around it. I mean, I don't just want to bunch this up and stick it there because I usually tape in my... Uh, my little USB drive. And I prefer these guys. Uh, let me see. I got one stuck in the front there. They're just better. They're not big and bulky. Sometimes it'll knock the front out, but not near as bad with these small USBs. Sometimes the, the base will knock it out. If I have a big one in there, it'll knock it out for sure. The little ones do a lot better, and I normally tape that one in here because this one has everything on it. It has test tones. Uh four different folders of music, you know, like my daily driving, listen to it and bump with the windows down all the way down to my demo low. So that way if the front, and I usually keep the front USB with newer music to demo to shoot videos with, if that makes sense. But if the front USB fails when I'm at a show, I got the, the other one as a backup, which will have everything on it. Like, so yeah, it's all good guys. Anyway, try to try to get this down there. Say a prayer for me. Wish me luck. Whatever you got to do. Send good vibes. All right, so this wasn't bad at all. It was bad to get it started, but not to actually get it. And I want to show you all this. Yeah. This is a... Oh, let me get it. I won't focus on it really, but... It is a Skosh brand... And it's called Fish and Snake Tool. That's what it says on the side of it. And I'll tell y'all something. Let me get out this Jeep. It's, it's got a wire in it, and it's extremely flexible. And basically, it's made to plug your RCAs on and snake them through from behind the dash down. And it stays in this drawer here with all of our dash stuff. But... I never knew they existed. I, I didn't. I didn't even know that was a thing. Until I started coming here to Dustin's shop, and I used his. He showed it to me, and I'm like, shit. That thing is awesome, guys. So I tried to buy one. He bought that one at AutoZone, he said, years ago. And, uh, of course, AutoZone don't have them no more. But... <laughs> <clears throat> with a quick search on eBay. Well, actually, I did a Google search and it found one on eBay. I paid $10 shipped for one. It was the only one on eBay. But that made, I just taped the USB to that, 
got it down under the dash where I could give a pull. And I pulled one hand, pushed with the other, and it got the thing right out. So, yay. Now when I put the radio in, I will have the inside of the Jeep done. You can see I got everything pulled apart here. So, what I'm going to need to do is uh, I'm going to need to basically put all that shit back together. If that makes sense. Uh, got to hook up, tie in the wire that I ran for the headlights. And then I got a, uh, I'll show you. I got a pink wire here that I ran out. It's going to have to go nice and neat somewhere over there. I had, and it's just basically going to hook to my under hood battery thing. The way I, because I mean, look at the wires here. I mean, we're less than a foot of wire coming off that alternator. So, uh, yeah, all this shit hooks together. So, and these two cables here, they come from the other alternator. So basically, I can hook to either one of these, and then I got this little bridge here going to here. I could run it right there, and we're golden. So anyway, uh, yeah, that is for the LF audio voltmeter to tell me. And what, what it's going to do is it'll tell you what your alternators are putting out, and it'll tell you your battery bank. Why do I want to know what my alternator is putting out? I've already realized if you have one alternator go bad out of the two, it's going to tank your voltage and amperage. I realized that when my brand X I had on here went bad and it was killing the auto tech alternator. Like I was think I think I was charging it like 35 amps and I unplugged the brand X and then the auto tech started putting out like 240. Two, I know it was over 200. And when I would plug the brand X back in, it would tank it down to like 30. And then if I unplugged the auto tech and plugged the brand X in by itself, it was putting out like a milliamp, a couple milliamps. So anyway, that's how I found that out. But my voltage was suffering a little bit too. Uh, anyway, I just want to see what the difference is between the reading in the front and reading in the back. That's why I'm doing it. Now, that LF voltmeter, uh, Marion, the guy that uh, invented it, he did say you could hook that to an amplifier. So you know the voltage like going right into the amp. You can hook it anywhere. But I want to see what alternator is doing. But anyway, I'm going to get this shit done, and I'll be back. So I got this in. The radio is all in and working. The headlights are working. I've done pulled it out. What I've done since I've been off camera is that. Put the front end back together. And uh, I wired this directly to my battery in the back because this red wire was ran through a relay. I took it out of the relay wired it directly to the battery and then I probed my battery bank in the back with a multimeter and I set this gauge right here to exactly what the multimeter was saying and you can do that through the phone app when you change the faces and everything because you will have some resistance between this wire running through the vehicle so it allows you to just ever ever place like you know 15 16 then all of your decibel points after like you can turn this thing i think on three or four decibel points if you want it i didn't want it i just wanted it on two and then i fine-tuned this meter to match my multimeter in the back probe in the battery and then down here at the bottom you can see let me focus minimum is 15.99 and 16.38 is what the alternator has put out so far it shows my, my lie, low and high that the alternator has put out. And then the big meter is my actual battery voltage. And you've watched it climb just since me sitting here idling. It seems like everything in my dash is still working after I got it all back together. And I didn't unhook the power window switches, so yeah, they still work good. So I do have headlights. I tested them before I left the shop. So it seems like everything's going good. Guys, I dig that meter. That is a badass little meter. I know it costs $200, but I dig it. Um, and I got a link for that in here in my bio. If you wanna buy one, please use my link. It helps me out tremendously. Uh, but 
I, I, I ain't lying, guys. The quality of this thing is astronomical. I can't wait for him to release that wireless base knob. Can't wait because I will be getting one of them and putting it in here as well. Uh, I mean, just watching his videos on everything he's going through with it to design it and make sure that, that the noise is at like 0 0.01. THD is just going to be astronomical guys uh yeah I'm waiting on that but anyway I'm gonna drive home because Deb is waiting on me and uh now that Jenga Lang's all back together and has lights <laughs> I'm gonna go home and see the wife and see what's going on but it's only like 1 30 so I got this done pretty quick for as far as I had the dash and everything in the front tour part but lo and behold I hope nothing else goes wrong guys and uh, I'm probably going to end this video here and start something else tomorrow. So thank you all for watching my shit. Please use my affiliate links in the description. It helps me tremendously. I have been having a lot of people. I don't know if they're from here. TikTok, Insta, Facebook, wherever, messaging me for enclosure device. I can't get to everybody. But all my Patreon members, they come first and foremost. So when Patreon members ask me enclosure port whatever i try to help them to the best of my ability so keep that in mind guys you can help support the channel for as little as five dollars a month that's one coffee not even a coffee at seven brewer starbucks but the, the bottled shit that i drink most of the time but anyway i appreciate all y'all if you watch this shit and let a commercial play you're helping me so thank y'all for watching and i hope y'all enjoy the videos peace out guys and as always merry christmas and Base on. We'll, we'll end this with that looks so clean.